Hello and welcome. So this video is basically a kind of guide slash troubleshooting step. Um, this is kind of come about because I had some 360 footage from an old 360 camera of mine that was basically captured during two lenses. However, I no longer have the software to convert this to equitangular. So I'm going to kind of go through a way that we can convert this sort of double fisheye kind of lens effect uh, back into something that we can work with within 360 programs. So all this footage here was captured on the Gear 360. The same principles though would apply for different 360 cameras. You just have to adjust the FOV and the position slightly depending on the capture format. Okay, so I'm just going to take this piece of footage here and I'm just going to drag it into After Effects because that's the program I'm going to be using to convert this into an equitangular format. And I'm going to drag this down to this little film icon to create a new composition. So here we have my composition. The issue with this is, as you can see, I can't really do anything with it. We've got this one, it's just one lens here, we've got this one here for the second lens. I need to, however, convert this into a quintangular, which means I need to distort it in the correct manner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Composition Settings. And I'm just going to look at my values here for my width and my height. So at the moment, the aspect ratio is 2 to 1, which is the correct kind of aspect ratio we need for a quintangular. However, we actually need to take away these two lenses and separate them into separate shots and then convert them into an equitangular format and then stitch the two back together. So I'm going to divide my width by 2. So this should be 1920. There we go. And then I'm going to go over to my little panel over here to the align option and I'm just going to hit align to left. So now I should have the one lens filling up my entire window which should be now a one by one square. I'm going to rename this to lens one and then going to hit control D or command D to duplicate. Open up my duplicate composition, select my clip and I'm now going to align the second clip to the right. So lens one and lens two we should now have set up. I'm going to duplicate this one more time, so I'm going to press Command D on Lens 2, and I'm just going to rename this to be my Final Comp. And with my Final Comp select, so I'm going to go to Composition Settings, and I'm just going to times this back by 2 to bring it back to our 2 to 1 aspect ratio. And align this to the middle. So I've now had a composition that's the right size. I'm actually just going to now delete this video clip like so. And I'm just going to drag in lens one and lens two. I'm going to toggle off lens two at the moment just because we don't need to look at that one at the moment. But with lens one selected, I'm going to go over to my effects and presets and select VR Converter. It's under Immersive Video, under the Effects and Presets option. Drag this onto my composition within my Final Comp. And I'm going to change the input to be Fisheye, Full Dome. And I want it to convert to Equitangular 2 to 1, like so. The output width frame width should be the sort of frame width of our composition. And the field of view should be 180 because each lens on a 360 camera tends to capture around 180 degrees. I'm now going to go to lens 2 and do exactly the same. So drag the VR converter onto lens 2, change the source to be fisheye to equitangular. However, on this second clip, I'm going to just adjust the pan to be 180, like so. So what you should have when the two clips are visible is we should have this sort of overlay where we've got the kind of 
second lens kind of being mirrored on either side of our front lens. And if we've seen other equitangular images or other 360 formats, this should start to look kind of correct to us. Now, the thing to kind of bear in mind is we uh, can see here we've got du duplication going on, where we've got this tree here that's actually being duplicated here, and likewise over here. And we need to now marry this up to overlay here correctly. So to do that, I'm going to go to Lens 2, back to my composition here. So this is the original composition that I've got in my final comp. I'm just going to right click and pre-compose. And I'm going to make sure that all attributes are copied into this new composition. So it copies across all the values that we're going to do here into its uh, sort of nestled composition. The reason we're doing this as a pre-comp within a composition is if we tried to do the masking on this original format video, uh, you might start to find some kind of erroneous outputs. Uh, you might find that it kind of just doesn't quite work when we start to adjust the kind of offset and field of views in the final comp. So with this pre-composition selected within our composition, I'm going to double click on our ellipse tool. This will now create a cutout like so. And you can see I've got my outline selected by having my toggle mask and shape path visibility on, just so I can sort of see my outline on my mask. And I can also toggle the transparency of my composition with this little box here. I'm going to click on the drop down on my mask. I'm going to bring back the expansion a little bit to, on the gear 360, you reduce it by 30 on the expansion and on the feather we increase it by 30 and again these values do change depending on the 360 camera you're working with so again I would encourage you to sort of play about with what looks right when we get to the next step for the output of how your camera deals with the two lenses so some lenses we will find will actually have the two uh, images further apart on the final composition some will be closer together, so again we just have to adjust those values as we see fit. So I'm just going to drag my lens 1 below lens 2. So lens 2 is the one I've just done that uh, work to to have the mask added. And what I'm going to do is under the field of view option here, I'm just going to pull the value up like so and I'm just going to keep adjusting it until I am essentially replacing the footage underneath and trying to remove the ghosting as much as possible. There we go. It's done a pretty good job. You can still see a kind of stitch line there and again if I'm not quite happy with it I can adjust things like the roll or the pitch if, if the camera for whatever reason one lens is slightly off kilter to the other which can happen depending on how your footage is captured again depending on the camera so just checking everything seems fairly okay and just increase the resolution to full so if we've got a kind of harsh line at any point we can start to adjust the feather back on the previous composition here I'm now just going to go to Window, VR Comp Editor, add a 2D edit on this final comp, just to preview what it looked like in 360. So this is my 360 view here. If I press C on my keyboard or use the camera tools up here, Shift 1 or Orbit Around Cursor tool and click and drag, I should be able to now move around my 360 image and start to see my image as it would be originally intended and again if we're not happy with our stitch line now we can adjust our our masking or our field of view values back in our final comp bear in mind this isn't the best way of doing it if your 360 camera does include the tools to convert the fisheye view into equitangular it's recommended you do that however if you haven't got access to the software anymore or you need require a license, be able to delete a license key for it. This is a way you can do it. It's not the most optimal way, and it's a little bit more long-winded, 
but it's just a sort of step I've had to follow because I no longer have my Gear 360 software license key. And although this footage here I'm probably not going to actually use for anything, it's just nice to be to know that I can convert it if I need to. If I still want to reorientate or reset my footage, I could duplicate my final comp. Have these two pre-composed together. And in this pre-composition, I could add the offset value. And now I can reorientate my cameras. So if I didn't want my starting point to be on one lens, one lens, I can always use the offset to now change it to be the other lens, like so. Hopefully this has been helpful to some people. And again, like I said, if you've got the software already included in the camera to do this, it's best to use that. But just to let you know that you can work around things uh, in post if you have any issues. Um, but you do have to adjust the values to what works for the camera you've got. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.